All right, this is part two of the fossils collecting. I've got them lined in a row out of my driveway. I'm going to show you some of the brachiopod clusters that I've collected and brought home. Uh, the first one <clears throat> shows uh, bryozoan fragments that have been aligned by the current. And to be, I have not seen that before. Cep many cephalopod shells lined up by the current. I've seen uh, crinoid stems lined up by the current, but I don't recall ever seeing uh, bryozoan fragments lined up by the current. And they're almost as thin as spaghetti. So because they are so thin, I think that's why that happened. See all the thin spaghetti strands of bryozoan swept in this direction. A lot of brachiopods, a lot of cerebella brachiopods are mixed in with these. This is a close up of a brachiopod that has been totally enveloped by Bryzoa. The video camcorder acts as a hand lens itself if you get real close to the fossils. These are inverted raffinusquinas. Uh, raffinesque fossils, brachiopods, and it's named after a Frenchman, unlike the other names, which were Latin. Um, these are inverted, so they're almost like uh, cereal bowls, in the sense that these will hold water. Typically, you'll find the, them laying uh, on the other direction. When you find them inverted like this, that's probably a sign that you're looking at the underside of the rock. So actually, this is the orientation, the, uh, the correct orientation is like this. You're seeing the underside, the whole rock's been turned over, and uh, so that's why they're inverted. Ordinarily, the sea currents will flip these over to being uh, not concave, but convex. Instead of resting peacefully on the seabed, they have been, the oozy soft mud has all been pushed by hurricane-like force uh, water currents, and now it's what's called shingled raffinuschinas. And um, it's hard to make out, but each one of these is the edge of uh, one of the seashells. It's called shingled, but it also reminds me of uh, the way Pringles come out of a can. Pringles potato chips come out of one of the cans. This is a very clustered rock here that has a lot of uh, strophomena in it. And there's one laying flat. There's another one. Um, again, that's laying peacefully on the sea floor, clustered together. However, here, here I have a shingled version of that. And that is the sea storm has swept them up and the oozy mud, they've all clustered together. This is the front side, or the top side. Back side's a little more revealing. Look at all the uh, look at all the intermeshed, all the jammed together shells. I consider this the find of the day. I, I really enjoyed this. I'm going to show you a wet version. By pouring the water on, it brings out the contrast of the minerals. There's another fragment. And you can see photos of these from past field trips. Other people found uh, the exact same thing. Here's that thin little slab of clusters of sarbella. Get a close-up version of that. Oh, I think they're really neat.
Here's a close-up of uh, Sarbella brachiopods. That's beautiful. If you want to go back in time and really see what they were like. Here's another rock slab of them, a little bit thicker, and this is the underside of the rock, so they're all inverted. You're seeing the undersides. Some of them are filled in a little bit with sediment. See the hinges. But there's something else of interest on this rock. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bronze-colored pyrite. Let's give you some close-ups of that. You can see the close-up surface detail of one of the shells and growing on it is just the start of a bryozoan colony. What was nice about collecting in the Liberty in the white water was that the concentrations of brachiopods was far greater than you see in other places.